Welcome back to Jesse's Performance. As promised, we got the NAS rod onto the all-wheel drive dyno. Definitely watch to the end so that you can see the outcome. Here we go. Stacy, where are you? What are we doing today? I don't know, hopefully putting this thing on the dyno. Hopefully, right? Yeah, today, hopefully, maybe tomorrow. Today. Yeah? If we're gonna do it, it's gotta be today. We need to. I got too much to do tomorrow. So what are you doing? I'm running the valves. So, with these super high dollar race motors, um, which I guess I can't even say that's what this is, but with uh, solid roller stuff, you gotta continu continuously check the valve wash. Um, engine builder give me a specific number that I need to be have my valve lash at when it's cold. So I leave it overnight and let I run the valves. Um, if you don't run the valves, you get um, you can get extra vacuum in the motor, which you don't want. You'll start pulling oil. Obviously, you, you lose your cam lift and your cam timing on the valve event. And uh, also, if it gets too loose, it could break the, the rocker arm. And these are expensive. We don't want to do that. We don't want to break anything on this motor. Um, so, yeah. I'll get the valve cover off and I'll, you guys will get to see the magic that happens inside the NAS rod motor. So uh, Steve and Steve Moore said to run these ones here at 16 thousandths lash. Uh, lash means how loose it is, um, the measurement of how loose it is um, before there's zero lash. Uh, the reason we run them like that is because they grow. When things grow, it's gonna it's gonna set the proper preload and take out the lash after it's warm. Um, so I got my uh, got my feeler gauge. Uh, I've been checking a few of them. Everything seems to be tight. I always I always run the valves before we run the car um, Just to be safe because I don't want to buy any of this stuff again so uh, Show show my bump button Stacy the key to running the valves by yourself is being able to have a remote start button so you can crank it over to each individual rocker arm um, So you can check the clearance of each one if not, you got to go back inside the car and bump it or try and crank the, uh, turn the crank over manually and a lot of times you can't do that stuff. So having a bump button like that there really makes this easy. Alright, so this side's all good. I'm going to put the valve cover back on and I'm going to check the other side. I have had one come loose before so this is why we always check them all and don't just check one. So what I want you guys to see here is, you know, not only do we have Jessel valve train and big O's, you know, pack springs and stuff on this thing, but check out the size of those push rods. Uh, let me get my phone so I can get a light for you guys. These things are like 916 push rods. These, they're insane how big they are. You know, with the, they're they're long because of these cannon valve heads, so they make it to where they just they put a really really big push rod in it and it stays together. We are here at the Kraken alignment rack. These gentlemen are nice enough to let us use our alignment rack, and we have the NAS rod on here today, getting it ready for LS vest. Um, We've done a lot of upgrades to the suspension and steering of this thing, and I have yet to align it. So I want to align it to make sure that we get it going straight 
like we need it to. So, um, I just did all the sets. Let's see where our numbers are at here. Just did all this here, so. Mm. We don't have barely two degrees of caster, not nearly enough caster on the front. So, um, toe's a little off. That's no big deal. It's the same on both sides, so zero, zero there. But we need, need some toe. Camber's just where we want, so I don't even have to adjust the camber today. Um, basically, I just gotta get the caster way turned up for us. As you can see, this is the left, this is the right. The colors don't mean anything, so I have it set up for like a Subaru or something, whatever was on here before. But um, I'm just after the numbers, not the colors. All right, so here's the rear numbers. Again, color don't matter, but it does look like we have about almost a degree of rear steer in this thing. Half a degree here, negative there. So um, I'm gonna try and center that up too while we're here. Um, that'll just help ensure that I go straight. Um, obviously, I lined it one time before, but things move around. Things of you know, even with ride heights and stuff, things move around. So um, I'm gonna get those squared away. But the most important is the caster up here, because without caster, this thing does not want to go straight. If I put enough caster in it, it'll want to just drive itself straight. on the speed bumps too. So it's pretty well centered already. So oh, I'm that's just going to lift the jacks down and uh, that's where it falls. In the bed of your truck. In the bed of my truck here. <laughs> Bail wire. Bail wire. Bail wire would be the next, the next thing I would, I would try and use for sure. Probably got some metal wire next door. Uh, we get desperate. Yeah, okay, uh, burn that one down. Shouldn't get that hot on this pipe. So. Uh, 
on like the Subarus and stuff, I can't put anything on even the, on the tailpipes really. Yeah, turbo stuff is is nasty. Yeah, but. it's a lot hotter on the exhaust. Yeah. Do you want to try wire just in case it does get hot? Yeah, let me go see if Sean got some wire. Wire. I got my mechanics wire. Oh, mechanics wire. Hold my exhaust up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see her here. We broke a broken exhaust hanger, so we made a, you know, this one probably won't break. This will probably be solid. We'll leave <laughs> this one on for Kentucky. Just kidding. We're over here at Kraken slash Datsun tuning. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Dotson. Dotson. But D O T S O N. Dotson. Not like the car. It's kind of weird. But, anyways, we're over here at Dotson Tuning. They're going to let us use our all wheel drive dyno. They do a lot of Subaru stuff, so they're used to 300, 400 horsepower. Hopefully, we're going to bring some heat. Uh, my goal would be anything 800 plus. If we, I don't care what the number is, as long as we can get a full pull, all wheel drive, make sure everything's not broken. Okay. Um, so we're not tuning, we're just doing dynamos. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the laptop. You can come in. Oh, yeah, you're going to run. I am going to be on um, logging and checking the tune on the laptop and just looking for anything I can do. Sure. But, but it does have um, Steve Morse tune in, so I'm probably going to leave that alone. Okay. Um, All right. So we brought everybody with us. We got old Slick Kyle over here, what's Greg, up? Kate, JJ. JJ. All right. So what are your guys' guesses? About three Scooges. 840. 888. 841. <laughs> I think it would be really cool to get 850. So, like I said, anything over 800, that's given us 200 horsepower, which is about 20% drivetrain loss. I think right. that's kind of where we're going to be with the all-wheel drive. I just hope it stays together. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, if it breaks, we do have enough time to get stuff for Kentucky. That's why we're doing this now. Not yeah. there. Uh, What's it weigh? Uh, 26? 2,400. I'd say 6 with fuel and everything. I think it's before we added Yeah. Oh, well. That's right. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, hopefully it doesn't break. I've done some street driving. I've done a lot of hits on it. The the front U-joint is the only thing that makes me nervous. That's what I was going to say. Because I don't think it's the exact right U-joint. Um, but I'm going to make a third gear rip and see if it holds. And if so, then we'll put it in fourth gear and we'll, we'll give it, we'll lean on. Okay. Do we weld those caps in? I welded the caps in. I personally did it. And <laughs> All right. Yeah. The only thing that sucks is if it, let's go to the drive shaft, it bends the steering rod. Every time. And that and that was so. Okay. All right. Well, here I go. Okay. Very back. Um, laptop. I'm this. All right. Okay. Did that um, did that's all based thing? on weather. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I have um, like humidity, humidity, pressure. You're gonna need the mouse to the part. Yeah. And I'll step it on your side of the car. How do you really feel? Are you nervous? All right, so I'm always nervous, right? No, when it's my too. own stuff, because we're always like, uh, it should make, you know, we're safe to 800 and we're like, let's make a thousand. Like, yeah. that's just how it is, right? But I think we, I've, I've been on it enough and I've been hard enough on it. I think it's going to be just fine. Um, and if we're not going to be like hitting it hard, we're just going to be rolling into the throttle because we're on a dyno, right? Yeah. And it's load based, so it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Alright, cool. Mechanics wire is what they call I, it. I saw in your last video, like it was hanging down. Like, you see that? Yeah. You probably see it. It's just, it's yeah. Like 
It's just rubbing on that roller. And then JJ pulled up the golf cart. <laughs> it's on purpose. On purpose. He needs to take a pair of pliers and twist the line. Go out there. We got a bunch of tools there. the test um, I'm gonna look at the data but we chucked the drive shaft again and we uh, put a hole in the oil pan again I can fix it again not a big deal we get the drive shaft rebuilt again um, I'll have it fixed tonight so we can go to the car show tomorrow and then um, we'll have the drive shaft I got to get a new yoke for the differential get a new u-joint get a new uh, drive shaft stub I'm sure the parts the yeah, parts are here somewhere <laughs> the parts the parts are here somewhere um, we got lucky that it, no one got hurt. Uh, so I would do this in a controlled environment to start with, because if that would have happened at LS Fest, it would have been bad news bears. Yeah. So I have an idea of what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some billet pieces, overnighted from Japan, or whatever, right? So, um, but we're gonna get this off this man's dyno, clean up our mess, 
and get the hell out of here and get this thing fixed. Get the whole pan out and get it fixed. All right. All right, y'all, that's it for this week. Make sure you stay tuned. We will get this figured out. We're back to the drawing board, but Jesse's got some ideas already on how he's gonna get this thing fixed and we will have it ready for Kentucky. Uh, two weeks away, less than two weeks away. So definitely stay tuned and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.